Hello! This video is going to focus on hyperlinks and hyperlinks can be several different things. Um, when you're making a hyperlink you can take us to an external web page so let's say a teacher has a teacher site that you want to go to. Um, hyperlinks can take you to a page within the site. They can take you to anything. Um, so I'm going to show you how those work and by hyperlinks we mean so many different things, and I, I feel like I should cover this so that people aren't confused, because my, I know my kids get confused with hyperlinks all the time. Um, but one of the main things that hyperlinks are used for on this site is emails. So let's go to the preview mode. So I'm in preview mode, so these hyperlinks will actually work, and you can tell the difference between just regular text, because I can just select regular text. But if it's a hyperlink, you get this little hand signal. So I'm going to Dr. Jo Dr. Cummins page. So here's his page. So his name was hyperlinked to his page. Um, I'm working on getting on everybody's alma maters linked to those websites. I just haven't done it yet. Took the time to put the alma maters on there, but that's another, you know, couple hour session. So maybe I'll eventually get that done. But this button right here, the back button is hyperlinked or it's anchored, whatever you want to call it, to take us back to that page that we were originally on. So we are on the district office staff page and everybody's email on here is hyperlinked to their email. Not everybody on here has a page yet. I just haven't had time to make theirs. Um, Dr. Cummins does, but I don't think anybody else on this page does. But everybody should have a link to their email. So when I click on that, I mean, depending on what your comp the settings are on your computer, like, I don't know where that's going to take me right now. Um, on the computers at the school, I know that sometimes when you click on that link, it takes you to Outlook, which we don't use Outlook anymore, so that doesn't really work. But for people at home, like when I do it on my own time, it takes me to Gmail. So that's really useful if the settings on your computer are configured correctly. So that's a hyperlink to an email. Let's go to a staff page so we can see the staff page hyperlinks. So all of these names are hyperlinked to the page for that person. So you've probably already figured that out right now because you've probably went and found your page, but those are hyperlinks. So just to clear the air, just to make sure everybody understands what hyperlinks are, they can also be like if I go to, I'm trying to think of somebody who has a hyperlinked page, I believe Ms. Herbert does, which you wouldn't be able to do this on your um, computers at school because we don't have access to Facebook um, or Twitter, but on Mrs. Herbert's page, she has a link to her Seneca FCCLA Twitter page. So when I click on it, it went into a separate tab, so that's one very user-friendly feature, um, but that's... The, that's the basics of what a hyperlink is. So just in case anybody wasn't sure, that's how it works. So right now, I'm going to go into the Heritage Club page, which we were working on in the previous video. So the Heritage Club is the high school club. So I'm going to scroll down all the way to that page um, that we created. And it's way down here. There it is. Ah! Okay, so here's the Heritage Club page. As of right now, there is no way to get to this page unless I create a hyperlink. Because when I hit preview and I go to high school, it doesn't show up there. And then when I go to high school and I go to clubs and organizations, I can see Heritage Club. It's down here. I think it's in the middle. I don't know how far down it is. There it is. So I can see Heritage Club, and I can see that Mrs. Beck is a sponsor, and I can see their icon, but none of this is clickable. So I'm clicking my mouse and nothing's happening. So what I do is, I'm going to go back to my editor, scroll down to Heritage Club. I'm going to double click on Heritage Club. And for any of you that are editing the junior high or the high school club pages, this is set up as a list. Um, so that's why it's called list settings here. So these are not just icons, name of title and then paragraph because that would have taken forever to build that so I used what's called a list builder and it's actually just a side before I finish doing what I was doing when you click add it's just down here at the bottom so 
anyways just FYI so that's why when you click on this it just doesn't let you edit here you have to edit over here and so if you want me to take the time to show you how to do that sometime if you want to create your own I can but you would just click these buttons to move through to the different ones and then if you wanted to change the order of them um, then you would click design and then actually go back into the items and then you can drag them where you want them so if you wanted choir to be first you can make choir first or you could leave it the way it is or if you wanted to move heritage club all the way up to the top you could um, so anyways that is how that works and then we're actually going to edit the heritage club so i'm going to click on edit so now i'm here in the heritage club page and what i actually want to hyperlink is the title so that would be this right here so i'm going to click i don't have to have this selected i can just click this button here this is the hyperlink icon it's a little link so when I click on that um, these are my options so I can link it to a web address so if I just wanted to link it to the National Heritage Club website then I could if I wanted to link it to Mrs. Beck's email I could um, these are anchors here uh, to where if you clicked it it would take you to the top of the page um, I'm working on getting these buttons on some of our pages that are longer. I just haven't done it yet. Um, and then this is a page bottom, so if you want to go all the way down to the bottom. And then anchor, I haven't really played with those yet, but if you wanted to anchor it to a specific paragraph or something like that, then you could. Um, documents, which I am going to go over in this video uh, closer to the end, maybe in the middle. Um, but page is actually what we want to do right now, because I want to take this, these words, right here I want somebody to be able to click on Heritage Club and then it takes us to the page that I just created so I'm gonna click on page I'm gonna use this drop-down menu that can make your head spin sometimes if you spin if you scroll through it too fast I'm gonna find um, right now I'm in junior high and I know that because I created this pages but it may take you a while to remember the order so I'm gonna scroll all the way down I'm in the middle of the high school pages right now and there's Heritage Club. So I'm going to click on Heritage Club, and now it's hyperlinked. And I can double check myself by clicking Preview. And I scroll down, which I don't know why my thing keeps stopping right there. And now when I click Heritage Club, it's going to take me to Heritage Club. So that's super easy. It's a very easy way to hyperlink. And if you are somebody who likes to use those back buttons, um, you'll notice there's not a back button here. So very quickly, I'm going to, here I am in the Heritage Club page, I'm going to, I'm actually going to click on this Junior Statesman because I know that there's one on there. I'm going to click this back button. I'm doing Control C on my keyboard, or you can click this icon here. I'm going to go back to the Heritage Club page because these are both high school club pages, so that's why I can do it this way. Control V, or you could have clicked this button. Um, and then when I click on this back button, I just want to make sure it's going to take me back to that original page, and it does. So this back button is hyperlinked to the clubs and organizations page for the high school. So now, when I hit preview, here I am at the Heritage Club. Oops. When I hit the back button, it's going to take me back to that original page. So it makes it really easy. And I don't know why that keeps jumping so fast. I'm sorry if that's giving somebody a headache. But when I click on Heritage Club, now I can click that back button, and it takes me right back there. So just adding things like that just help to make the site really user-friendly. Um, of course, people can hit the back button, um, you know, like the backspace button on their keyboard, or if they're on their mobile version, they can go back. But it's always nice just to have that back button there because it just, it just makes it easier for people to use. So that's hyperlinks. That's how they work. You can make them go anywhere. You can hyperlink anything. So if I was in here, if I wanted to hyperlink the image, then, you know, here's how I could change the image so I would upload it, and then here's how I could hyperlink it. If you're just on a random page, like let's say I'm on Stephanie Livingston's page, and I have some text here that I want to hyperlink, you just double click on the text box, select the text that you want to hyperlink, click the link options, and then choose what you want to do with it. And then the email is really easy it's the same way so I would select the text click the hyperlink button and then in my link options I would choose email 
So it's already set up for her, S. Livingston at SinecarSeven.com. So it's going to go straight to her. And then and on all of the staff pages, um, any person that works in this building is going to have this box here. This box here is linked. It sh everybody should have it linked to their email. So if you ever notice that an email is wrong or you notice that, you know, when you click on somebody's email, it doesn't take you to email, it takes you somewhere else then you may want to go in there and change the settings for that. So you would just double click it and then the setting is right there. And I haven't messed with any of this stuff. Um, so if you wanted to change these things, you could. I just haven't done that. So these little stars are saying that these items are required. So if you ever wanted to go in and change that stuff, you could. And if the person actually, what I've learned is that if the person puts their email in here, then you could actually reply back to them. So when they click on this and send you a message, it goes directly to your email. And if they put their email here, then you can email them back. But if they don't put their email, then you can't email them back. So you can make that mandatory or you don't have to make it mandatory. You can do whatever you want. So that's how hyperlinks work. Um, Next, I'm going to talk about, oops, I didn't mean to click on that. i got to look at my notes because I don't remember. Oh, we talked about hyperlinks. We talked about linking emails, creating club pages. Um, we basically just did that for the Heritage Club. So I've already covered that between the two of these videos. So if you wanted to see how to create a club page from scratch, then you would want to watch the previous video because the previous video explains how you would go in here and then you would click on the your buildings page and then you would either click add or you would go find a page that you like the setup for and then duplicate. So um, if you want to see how to create a, a club page from scratch, that's how you would do it. Um, so yeah, that's how we make hyperlinks on the page. That's how we keep our website nice and user friendly. And if you ever notice that a link is not working, so for example, when I click on SES documents, I happen to know that we don't have a page for the SES documents yet, so whoever's working on that page, I believe it's Kara and Lisa King, um, Kara Weber and Lisa King, so the two of you can come up with um, the documents that you think that parents and students or whoever are going to need, um, be it newsletters or, you know, whatever you need, and I just realized this is actually the early childhood, so I actually need to rename that early childhood documents, but same difference. Um, when early childhood, when Jamie Wilson or Lisa King or um, Kara Weber, when you guys come up with a list of documents that you think are necessary for the parents, then you will go in to pages, you will click on your school's page, so click on your school's homepage, and then you will click add, and then probably you will want to click something like this, probably this one, about one, and then you would just name it. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and do this for you. So Seneca Early Childhood um, Documents. And you would want to make sure that you click Add as a subpage, and then when you click OK, it's going to become SEC Documents. So then you'll put your title up here, and then it'll be down here at the bottom of your list. So with elementary, it's going to be, you know, with the early childhood, it's really short, so it was just right there. But when you add it, to, when you go through these steps and add it to the elementary, it's going to add it way down here. So just remember that. Um, but again, just as a refresher, here's my SES documents, um, or SEC documents. This is not a page that we need to have hidden. All the staff pages we do, but since this is a documents page, we don't need to have it hidden. So I'm actually just going to drag it up here so that it, because it is one of the main pages. And I wouldn't suggest that you do this dragging thing that I'm doing because it takes forever and sometimes it glitches. But, anyways, we do want this to show up in the drop down menu, so we don't need to go here and click the hide from menu because it's okay if it shows up on the drop down menu. But now it's there. So if I hit preview, um, then I'm going to see it on that drop down menu. So that is how you add hyperlinks um, and all the different hyperlinks that you can add.